today is the 246th birthday of the Marines. So we want to make sure we wish all our veterans on Veterans Day tomorrow. Happy Veterans Day. And then we wouldn't be having these conversations and have these opportunities if it wasn't for our military. Shouts out to the vets. I'm a Purple Heart baby. Um, shouts out to my dad. Rest mm -hmm. in heaven. Uh, much love to all the veterans out there, Marines. Uh, like like you just said on the deli, we can't do nothing without you guys uh, defending the front. You know, infantry. Yeah. Infantry is real. And uh, yeah. we got the best in the world. Absolutely. Let's hit it. Booty Hoot Productions presents the Sports Deli Podcast, where everyone deserves a seat at the table, where we discuss the intersection between race and sports, mental health, leadership, and equality. To find out more about the Sports Deli Podcast, check us out online at thesportsdelipodcast.com. We are starting to have free giveaways. If you hear giveaway anywhere in the podcast, Send us an email to thesportsdeli at gmail.com with giveaway in the subject heading and in the body of the email, give us the answer to that podcast's specific question. When you hear someone say, make America great again, the first question you have is, well, when was America great? What I would say about Tom. Brady, yeah. If you don't want to be in this fight, then don't put a make America great hat up in your locker. Silently now, it appears that you are with the other group. Just don't get in the way. Uh, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> yeah. Stephen A. Smith is my alter ego. Go somewhere else with that. <laughs> John, she's roasting your ass. Colin Kaepernick, he's a hero in the same way that John Carlos and Tommy Smith were heroes. Legend. Then when George Floyd called out to his mother, he called out to all mothers, and I heard his call. So do you have white privilege? Absolutely. Now we have to be a voice as white people. Got it. African American women last year changed the course of this of this nation. Um, women are the backbone, and now we need to support the souls that they stand on. And now, whether you're folding laundry, driving, exercising, or cooking, grab your favorite deli sandwich or bagel and your favorite beverage, and let's do this together in the sports deli. Auntie, take us away. <laughs> On this 10th day of National Inspirational Role Models Month, I cannot believe that we have our first Flintstone, Bad Moon, on the podcast, former Sparty and former three-sport athlete at Michigan State University, retired 12-year NFL veteran, Andre Risen. Growing up, he was addicted to winning. He was a basketball and football genius at Flint Northwestern in Michigan. He helped Sparty to a Rose Bowl title in 1988, and he was drafted 22nd overall in the 1989 draft by the Indianapolis Colts. But that isn't even half the story. He would have been drafted higher, but Michigan State focused on the run game instead of the passing game. He played for seven different NFL teams and had 743 receptions, good for 10,205 yards and 84 touchdowns. He led the NFL in touchdowns with 15 in 1993 with Atlanta, and he also rushed for 23 touchdowns in his career, which I find amazing. At one point, he was the highest paid wide receiver in NFL history. He's got nine kids. He won a Super Bowl in 1996 with Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers in Super Bowl 31. And in that game, he caught a 54-yard touchdown pass from Brett Favre. He also won a Grey Cup championship with the Toronto Argonauts in 2004. He played with the likes of Eric Dickerson, Deion Sanders, his good friend, Lincoln Kennedy, Desmond Howard, the MVP of that Super Bowl, Reggie White, which we'll talk about later, Tony Gonzalez, and Derek Thomas, among some other incredible teammates and Hall of Famers. He was a five-time Pro Bowler. He loves Drake and Justin Bieber. And he is a nominee for Pro Football's Hall of Fame's class of 2022. In 2017, 
Ryzen was inducted into the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame in Detroit. He had numerous concussions during his playing days and some memory loss. And he and Deion Sanders were in MC Hammer's Too Legit to Quit video. He also did a video with Andre Agassi and a commercial with Nike. He's been a high school and college coach and is a pro wide receiver skills trainer. He appeared on MTV's reality show Made. And in 2020, Ryzen appeared in Lifetime's movie, Hopelessly in Love, The Lisa Left Eye Lopes and Andre Ryzen Story. He used to smoke weed and got reprimanded for it, but did it instead of popping pills, which is what a lot of other players did at that time. Ryzen appeared in the 2012 ESPN 30 for 30 documentary, Broke, about former professional athletes who squander their wealth. Broke he is not now. Spider-Man, as he was nicknamed in Kansas City, shares a birthday with Queen Latifah and was born the same year as Vin Diesel, Will Ferrell, Jamie Foxx, Julia Roberts, Jimmy Kimmel, Vanilla Ice Ice Baby, Lamar Ball, Pamela Anderson, Anderson Cooper, and Neon Deion Sanders, who we will talk about later. And he's part of the record label ONR, Old N rapping, can't say what the N word is, which is for 35 and older OGs only. Andre is working on an Andre Ryzen feature film and documentary, and his book, Wide Open, The Andre Ryzen Story, is available for pre-sale. Finally, Andre loves to teach his family and friends, especially his kids, how to get it. You can find him on Instagram at Andre Ryzen Official. And on Twitter at Andre Ryzen Pro and at Andre Ryzen Wide Open dot com. I can't tell you what an honor it is to have you on the Sports Daily Podcast where everyone deserves a seat at the table. What's up? Hey, what's happening, Dre? Man, I can't call it, man. I'm out here doing landscaping. Got a new deal. <laughs> new deals going on all around me. Where is that Plus, at? I'm in- I'm in a new build in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh, that's wow. You have the guts to go to Ann Arbor and build a house. <laughs> I, I, am the, I am the dog. <laughs> Man, you must be to be going to Ann Arbor to build something. <laughs> I love it. Wow. I love it. That's awesome. They're building one right next to me. So they're putting the siding on now. It'd be long before we get a blizzard. So I'm yeah, taking advantage yeah. of the 65 yeah. degree weather. Yeah, and that's uh, right. Doing this, I'm doing my own landscape. Wow, so, really? Where did you learn how to do that? Uh, I helped raise myself with my granddad and grandparents and my mom. Wow, that's so cool. But I'm in the process of uh, you hear them over there, right? Yep. Oh yeah. Wow. So I was in the process of doing this. And I got a call from my neighbor over there who's a former Wolverine. And my publicist is great friends and young lady wrote the book, young woman who wrote the book. She, she's, uh, we're going to write his book next. Uh, here, we got a couple books we're writing, but he, he's in line. And so she called him and I'm out here, you know, manslaving it. And he's like, dude, <laughs> your publicist called you. You need to be on the radio right now. <laughs> I said, man, they need to make the check bigger then. <laughs> yeah, you ain't lying. It's cool. Keeps you busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost done. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it feels good. I bought a house uh, about eight years ago during the nice. uh, during the down times, and we got lucky. It was like three sixty here in San Diego, and now it's worth eight fifty. I don't know how, but it's just <laughs> we got lucky. Nice. So you out there in San Diego? I'm in Dago. Yep. Okay, my guys out there, uh, Stevie Johnson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I got a true story. So in eighty eighty four. Uh, we had bus loads going from my high school where I was a freshman at Oak Park to Flint Northwestern. And mind you, I was a freshman, right? Little white guy. And, you know, what we were busing kids from the inner city in. It was a whole different experience for me. And so, you know, I was already trying to get acclimated to high school and, you know, being integrated. And it, it was an interesting time. And so we go to Flint Northwestern. I have never experienced anything like this in my entire life with you, Glenn Rice, and all the guys, and and the way that the gym was with the bars 
you know, like the old Kobo arena and you had an alley-oop in that game. I will never forget it for the rest of my life. I can't tell you who threw it. Uh, but that, that gym, that game with Oak park was, I mean, I don't know if you remember it, but I mean, it, it was, it was, Oh yeah. It was, it, it was, it was jam packed. It was, uh, hacked. It was, uh, well, our, our high school games had got so big where we had to, uh, when we got number one, when we became number one in the nation, they had to move our games to like the, um, at that time it was called the IMA, which is like Dort Federal Center now, like the wow. Civic Center. Yeah. And, you know, we were the first high school kids to ever play on national TV too, and local TV. Unbelievable. And we were the first ones to do it and we didn't think twice about it. It was cool, but man, we were just, we were just guys that were on a mission. And I think that's yeah. what ended up building that powerhouse at Flint Northwestern. And we had great coaches. We had a great fan base, student body. Oh. Uh, and we built the culture there. And um, it lasted a long time because <laughs> other NBA guys, other NFL guys came through there. Yeah. You know? And uh, it's unfortunate that that school has been closed, but I'm glad oh. uh, God gave me uh, one of my, granted me one of my wishes um, was uh, to be able one of them was, you know, to be able to come back and be able to be a coach at my alma mater in my high school. And uh, I was yeah. able to do that for a couple of years. And so right. I was glad I got that party in. But what a phenomenal, what a phenomenal school. Um, I tell people all the time, I say, man, I used to dunk the basketball. I dunked the basketball like John Morant back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, hell yeah. Like, lean, 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 <laughs> leaning in. Lean, leaning in. Yeah, hell yeah. Leaning in. Hell yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say, oh, man, man. I, used to dunk, I say, man, I used to dunk that ball like John Moran. They go running out the room. Yeah, whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, everyone knows you're for football. Tell, tell everyone about what it was like to play basketball at Michigan State. Man, it was awesome. It was a great experience. I got a chance to play along some great players, too. Scott Skiles, Steve yep. Smith, yep. Carlton Valentine. Uh, it was just, man, uh, Vernon Carr, uh, you name them. And, um Played with Tom Izzo, got got to play for the legendary Tom Izzo, but I also played for the legendary, you know, Judd Heco. Right. That was uh, that was Izzo's boss, and so right. Um, I can recall one basketball story. I played in the Rose Bowl and then played in the Big Ten basketball game the next day. Amazing. So, um, you know, when I be hearing all these gloats about all these great athletes and Bo Jacksons and you know on down, I'm like, man, you know what? I wasn't that bad of an athlete. <laughs> I made all oh, Big man. Ten track. I mean, I, I played basketball for a Big Ten basketball team. I, I was All American in football. I don't know much more you want me to do. <laughs> yeah, for real. No, it was it was fun to watch you and funny. So I'm a professional basketball skills trainer. So just gotcha. like you're just like you're a professional wide receiver skills trainer and 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 other things as well. But so I use a Steve Smith as a staple for my move for the last 30 years. So that fake spin, which oh man, I I used it the other day. It, it's it, first of all it's a safe move you don't have to cross over in front of somebody it's efficient it's a good setup with your eyes and i teach it constantly i can't tell you how many kids have succeeded with that move and so oh, i've man, you, you protect the ball you know yep. you put your back to the basket and then stevie stevie made it you know stevie made it hot though you know he made it oh like, hell yeah he, he turned it into post-ups step backs yeah. Yeah, he turned it into all. Oh, it just opened up a can of worms for him, oh. um, and especially at his tempo because he you you would think he'd be moving like a turtle, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> that's right. He turned he turned this you know this Deion Sanders you know this, this <laughs> Tim Hardaway crossover come out of nowhere, nowhere. and he can always shoot. So <laughs> all he needed was a step to get that shot off. You know, just a split second, and once he turned it into crossovers and double spins oh, and man. the step back off of it. Uh, it was a great weapon uh, for basketball. Great weapon. I use it right. I use it right now in my old man's league. Trust hey, me. Hey, for real. Okay, so uh, normally I go through, you know, from childhood on up, but I'm going to give you the choice because this is the sports deli. So I'm going to give you the menu, and I'm going to let you talk about what you want to talk about in the interest of time because I want to get to some of the rapid fire questions. Because I know you'll have fun with those. Okay, so we can either talk about the brotherhood at Michigan State and what that means to you even after uh, the incident with the white coach back in 1986, your relationship with Tupac uh, or Colin Kaepernick and most recently Aaron Rodgers. What would you like to, to tackle? No pun intended. Uh, 
oh shit, we can go Kaepernick, we can go with Rogers, we can go Rogers, we can go um we can go whatever. So my belief about Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Colin Kaepernick are this, uh, not necessarily in this order. Tom Brady is white privilege. And uh, as Jim Trotter said when he came on my show, don't have a MAGA hat in your locker. If you're, gonna, if you're not going to be a part of the movement, then get the fuck out of the way. And so he neither got out of the way, and it's his right not to publicly say Black Lives Matter. But I can't tell you, and I've been very critical of him on this show, how irritated I am that he has his platform as the most popular white guy in sports and maybe in all of America besides Donald Trump. And he hasn't said shit. Aaron Rodgers is white football privilege. And he went through all this just to save his ass. And so that is beyond frustrating. And with regards to Colin, I'm very glad that he compared it to slavery in, in the combine because I want people to be talking about the different narratives that are still going on in this country. And we're an anti-racist podcast. And as an ally, I have a responsibility, I feel like, to talk about that and get people to either shit or get off the pot. Mm-hmm. All right. Those are my takes. So what, what are your thoughts on, on uh, Aaron and, and Colin about those things? I mean, you know, the, the situation with Aaron is like, um, you got to know Aaron. I mean, and everybody should know AR by now. But he said he's an athlete, not an activist. I mean, does he have a responsibility to do more than that? I mean, that that, that made it piss me off more than what he said the other day, to be quite honest with you. Like, what in the entire you know, fuck? You know, that's always, you, know, you know, that's always been a sketchy topic ever since the 60s. Um, before minorities, we even allowed to play certain sports, be on certain golf courses. Um, Come on, Andre, it's not hard now. It's not even hard now. Like everyone since Colin and 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 since the women of the WNBA changed the whole fucking election, it's not even fucking hard now to come out. You won't lose endorsements. Like, what do you mean you're not an activist? Like, use your white privilege. Are you serious but, right but now? You know, but but you know, Sports Deli is sponsored by Sport RX, the leader in sport prescription eyewear. You can find them online at sportrx.com. And don't forget to enter the code DELI10 at checkout for your special 10% discount. And now back to this incredible interview right here on The Sports Talk. We all come from different walks of life, um, but a lot of similarity to them, regardless of your color. Um, and then there's the separation. There's the suburban, um, and then there's the privilege. Um, you know, if a black, you got to re- realize in the black community in the inner cities, um, if a if a if a Afro American makes it big and makes it large, um, and turns his back to his culture or turns right. his back on his people or where he came from, uh, he's considered as a uh, Uncle Tom, uh, as they would say. Uh, and so, as a kid coming up, you know, I didn't want that narrative. I always wanted to be uh, just as popular with the people who couldn't afford to come to the games uh, and the people that couldn't afford to live the the, the lifestyle that I live. I still made sure I was uh, available uh, as most, much as possible and also uh, definitive in their rights. Uh, when it came to uh, segregation or it came to uh, poverty or it came to education, um, I was always at the, and I'm still always at the forefront of it. And I've never spoken uh, for any other athletes because I know how hard it is in the first place to even make it to the professional ranks. Uh, but then to go beyond saying that, there is a responsibility um, that we do carry. Um, there is a due diligence that we have to uh, uh, carry. And I think we all carry it at different values. You know, some uh, value it more um, and some, you know, keep it tough more. Uh, just like race, racism in professional locker rooms. It's kind of hard to find racism in an NBA locker room as, as opposed as you find it in a football locker room because you got 50, 60, 70 guys. Um, from different different walks of places, but you'd be surprised who really communicates with each other in between Sunday to Sunday, and who really hangs and who really knows each other's kids and um, things of that that sort. You know, I was told as a rookie when I came in, "Hey, don't get close to your roommate because um, he might not be here." And then you get, catch feelings for your roommate, and um, you fall into bro love, and all of a sudden your bro's on another team, and you got to go against him and face him. So we came up in that era where now. These kids know each other. These young fellas know each other uh, a lot prior because of social media. And so they get to share values and share 
um, ideas uh, and share their thoughts about racism, about Black Lives Matter, about KKK, about Black Panther, about um, a whole bunch of the me from the me uh, to the to our to our American flag. Um, so it's a lot that comes with it, and so. But didn't you see more white allies in the last year and a half? And it doesn't it piss you off it, when those two guys in particular, the face of the league, the most popular sport in the world besides soccer, aren't saying shit publicly? It doesn't irritate you? Or are you just like, whatever, we ain't, we ain't relied on them forever anyways? The thing is, though, we grant so much power to uh, our star athletes. And uh, they're so polarized. Um, and, you know, I've been in that seat. But look what LeBron but I'm, done. Ground, but I'm a ground zero guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, I, I don't have to bark about my stripes where I come from and bark about them where I played at, the communities I've been in and served and helped the less uh, fortunate and the needy. Um, I don't have to bark about it, man. But I know who hasn't been there, ground zero, and they went to work, played in the NBA, NFL, whatever, and got their check, went home, and, and took care of their family and, and lived on and didn't get involved with nothing. And I could last time, I, if I can recall, um, you know, Charles Barkley said he wasn't a role model on a national campaign. Um, that was allowed. That was allowed to be said. So that was a that, long time ago, though. Yeah, but that resonated in the in the Afro American community. It did. You can you 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 can you went to Oak Park. You came over to Oak Park. Boom boom boom. Yep. You know damn you know damn well when Charles Barkley said it, it resonated in the ghetto. Yep. But the thing was. How many people are really wanting to be like Charles Barkley or be on that level? I think it touched more people that wanted to shoot, to buy the mm -hmm. Nike shoe, other than the Andre Rises and Glenn Rices and Jeff Greers, who was dreaming about maybe one day being better than Charles Barkley or just as good as Charles Barkley or the Mark Ingrams or the Carl Banks or the Lonnie Youngs. These are yeah. all the guys that came from Flint who yeah. went pro, who was Charles Barkley fans. He gets on a national campaign, paid national campaign, and he yeah. deliberately says, okay, well, I ain't a role model. I'm this and that or whatever. <laughs> At that time, Tom Brady was a little kid. Michael Jordan might have been the same age. Um, there's been many, many political incidents where Michael Jordan didn't say anything or didn't comment when they wanted to comment on it. Those are all That's true. cherished. Those are all <laughs> personal, you know, up to you. They own those rights. They own that. They own that. I agree. Particular privilege. If I knew Tom Brady a little bit better, uh, I probably could comment on a little bit better, but I don't see none of his New England boys, you know, that actually played with him, like Detroit Browns and the <laughs> other receivers, things of that nature. I don't see none of them really stepping to the forefront and being like, hey, man. But it's you, a, but Andre, it's what, a white issue. Want? It's a but white issue. Look, but, but then look what Drew Brees said. I ain't no Drew Brees fan. But I mean, so uh, Drew Brees. Aaron, it was ignorant. It was, but he apologized. He was, he he said, you know, and the, we don't have tolerance easy. for. You know, you know right, but he got a pass you know how, also. You know how easy it is to apologize, though. Right, that's what I'm saying. He got a pass, but at least he f***ing apologized. And yeah. and this is a white issue, and these guys aren't saying shit, and they're just going and playing football. And I'm not saying that the other NFL players don't have responsibility also to strike or do something about the coaching situation. Like, it's so f***ing ridiculous. Like, but let's no, just go I play football. I totally get what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying. And, and, but how many people are willing to come from uh, the Caucasian race, uh, white, white America, and be, like, so open-minded like you? Or so many, we only can go so far. You like we watch the Black Black Lives Matter. We watch many uh, demonstrations, and you would see speckles of white Americans in there walking alongside. But you wouldn't see a, a, a bulk, a vast bulk. But turn on TV and watch an NFL game. You don't see no blacks at the game. And if you do see exactly. blacks at the game, they're usually related to the players as playing. But if you look down on the field, it's probably eighty-five. I could be wrong. Eighty-five percent plus are Afro-American that carry that league. So I don't look at it as Tom Brady, the face of the league. I'm not busting my TV down to find Tom Brady. I'm busting my TV to find all those young fellas I just watched in college that got a chance to change their families' lives and change their lives. You know, that's what kills me about Henry Ruggs. It hurts me. You know, he never got a chance to really find himself, to, to like, grow out of all the stuff that built up to that point. Yeah. So it's, like, so many stories like that. And the thing is... Look in the stands. You don't see you don't right. see our nine to five black people in the stands. Right. One, it's, it's hard to afford. Yep. Two, 
Two, they don't feel privileged to do it. You see, right. you, you see what I'm saying? And so yeah. if you get a Tom Brady in a situation where there's, man, nobody's going to lose sleep whether Tom Brady says something or not about it. We, we probably would lose sleep if Michael Jordan commented on something. We probably would lose sleep if exactly. LeBron commented on something. Exactly. Um, if Aaron Rodgers said something, um, us, us as a race, we probably laugh and chuckle at it because we know Aaron's personality. Um, we know, we know he's, he's a game show host. He's a world champion. He's, he's got that charisma, but he also plays, he plays chess with people. He plays chess with the media. He's done it for years. Tom Brady ain't played no chess. Bill Belichick played all his chess, you know? So this, now he gets a chance to (laughs) play. Bill Bill, Bill, Bill played all his chess, you know? So now here he goes. He's removed from under the rock. The pressure's there. Will yep. you take that stand? Okay. Well, maybe Tom Brady came from a family that really didn't deal with blacks coming up. Maybe Tom didn't grow up around black people. Maybe I don't know. So the, he, he shies away from the comment, but I know damn well he threw a lot of touchdowns to a lot of black people. He threw a lot yep. of touch. He handed that ball off to a lot of black people. A lot of black people what protected him, right? So I, well. you know. I, I, I I beg to differ when uh, when it comes to like pointing a finger at somebody when they should stand up when I really feel ain't nobody even paying attention to his ass. Fair enough. Let me ask you about John. Uh, you, you've been public about saying that he's not a racist. I, I would probably tend to agree with this. So th- let me let me just share with you this timeline from my perspective and tell me if I'm wrong in this. So the emails were from 2011 until 18. Colin right. took a knee and Colin took a knee in 16. So the part, the part that I'm having a hard time navigating on the one hand is between 16 and 18, after Colin kneels, those emails are still coming through. I think that's f***ed up that you see someone do that. He's being, being blackballed, and then you're still going through these type of misogynistic and, and other kinds of comments in a private email, and I understand they're private. Now, since the murder of George Floyd, on the other hand, didn't hear one thing about his emails. So maybe he, he learned something even more since the murder of George Floyd. So I want to present the one hand where I can't wrap my head around since the kneeling, he continued to send emails. And since the murder of George Floyd, there were no emails, but that wasn't talked about. It's sponsored by Moolah Kicks. Moolah is M-O-O-L-A-H, like money, Moolah, and kicks like shoes, one word. You can find them online at moolahkicks.com. And it's the first ever female only brand basketball shoe so it's a shout out to the basketball street culture and it is also about fighting social injustice and gender inequality worldwide and here in the united states and again you can find them at moolahkicks.com and now back to this incredible interview right here in the sports deli you know i know john personally um, I, w- I would like to consider myself a great friend, especially stepping on the ledge and defending him. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we, like I said before and stated before, we all say some things behind closed doors that maybe shouldn't be publicized, and especially when you think they're private. That's why I say what the hell I, I feel. Yeah. And so and what I feel is right. And I don't disrespect people, and if I did, I'm sorry. But um, I'm not going to hold my tongue for nobody. I'm, I'm, I'm grown, you know? And mm-hmm. so it's hard to tell him to you know, in a private setting, uh, let's get a third eye and in, in which they, they are tracking. They know when you send an email, trust me, um, the government right. then knows everything that we do, uh, that third eye, or whether it's Google, whether it's whatever social media platform. Yeah. Um, my thing is, um, when you do certain things like that, once you push send, it's all over the web. It's yeah. all over. It's all regardless. Uh, the black market can get it. Black web can get it. Uh, and do anything with it. Uh, uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's dangerous. Uh, when you when you play them corporate games and you live in that corporate life and you, you most of your life is through uh, dialogue of uh, emails and things of that nature and powerful emails at that. Um, I, I I know personally, he's not a racist. Uh, but like I like I said before, where you come from, uh, nobody knows, man. And, and deep down in your roots, you don't know what your DNA is. Um, you know, with black people, uh, a black a black person, a black woman, a black man, 
um, a black child, um, the first thing you think about when you think about their DNA and their roots is slavery. That's the first thing that comes to mind, yeah. um, repression. Um, so anything going towards that way, any, any joke, any N-word, any, anything of that nature uh, is, 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 is going to be classified as racism. Uh, you know, I know I grew up around plenty of white people that was on welfare. Um, you know, I grew up not, 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 not believing in black and white. Did I know what black and white was? Yeah. Um, I grew up in Flint, Michigan, but I had white coaches. You came, you seen us. Yep. You couldn't, you could you couldn't tell that Glenn Rice was polished as a kid. Uh, Rising was polished as a kid. But with Jeff Greer being polished, you know, we were coached by white guys. And here, and here we went to Flint Northwestern. Elementary, junior high, you name it. So we didn't see. And you never had a black coach in the NFL, which I find fascinating. No, nope, I never had a black coach. Unbelievable. No, nope, never had a black coach. I had in black Toronto, coaches. in Toronto, black you did. Coaches. Right, position I had black coaches. Position coaches. Yeah. And then I had a black coach in Toronto. Right. But if you cut him, he might not have been black. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Um, it's all about what your upbringing, man, and, and how it you... It is. It is. It's about teaching the next generation. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and what you what you take the positives out of out of what you gain on the positives that you witnessed and, and, and live with it, man. You should never open your door, even though we know we got people out here living in, in, in vain and, and jealous and envy. Um, but, man, never leave your door with the intent to harm anyone, no matter what color they are. Um, no matter what race they are, no matter what genre they are, no matter what they are, man, leave the house with no intentions to harm no one. And yeah. I guarantee you, it'll be a better place. And it's just that damn simple. And then, you know, with education, education can kill a lot of racism, you know. Um, the correct education. <laughs> the correct education. The right. correct education and right. allowing these kids in the inner cities and in the, the low poverty um, trailer parks of, 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 of white America to get the proper education, to get the proper tutelage. And I'm not even going to push you towards the Bible, but find something to know that there is a higher power and that there is a faith and there is a Facts. belief. And if you got to look at me, if you got to look at me as a testimony of it, as I sit here with goosebumps, look at Andre Rising, man. Mm. You, look at, I, for a long time, I wondered who did I, who did I hurt? Who did I kill? Who did I crucify? For me to be scrutinized or whatever, yeah. Did I talk trash? Yeah, I talk trash when people talk trash to me. Did I ask to be traded after my rookie year after I gave Indianapolis an all rookie season? Right. Did I did I ask to not be offered a contract by the Atlanta Falcons after I gave them 50 touchdowns in five seasons? 50? Yeah, okay. Did I ask to go to Cleveland and okay and play for the greatest coach of all time, Bill Belichick at that time? Right. And not know that the team was going to move to Baltimore. Did I ask to go Crazy. to Baltimore and then ask to take a pay cut and then and then eventually be cut and have to find a team real quick, which was Jacksonville Jaguars, who had right. Tom Coughlin. Yep. And then bump heads and then look like I'm the bad guy and then find myself at arguably the greatest organization from foundation up with tradi tradi tradition with tradition and wins, and accountability, and validity, the Green Bay Packers. Mm. And, and God, God put a world championship in my hands. Not only that, he put a great fan base in my hands. He put a great, a great friends to this day in my hands. He gave me, he gave me so much abundance of, of, of opportunity and love, man, that Nobody could stop us then. Nobody could stop me. Nobody could stop Brett Favre. Nobody could stop Reggie White. And these are all guys who had some type of confliction, confrontation with their careers in their careers. And those guys are Hall of Famers mm. and looked upon as great people. Um, you know, with with Reggie, you know, passing away and mm. being able to achieve that Super Bowl before going and uh, Brett overcoming um, his addictions and, right. and, and being able to be with his wife and fight through cancer and win the championship and deal with his dad, his family, mm. and, and myself and my situation, man, there were other people just like us going through the same things. 
So the day that you think you're better than the game, you're too big for the game, the day that you think you're too good for your your, your teammate, whether he's black or white, that's the day you you live you 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 live in failure even when you're winning. And so I think that's the place that we got to come to in football. Dude, we were doing Colin Kaepernick stuff way before that. We yep. were wearing we were wearing Malcolm X shirts and hats on the yep. sideline. We were doing so much subliminal stuff to like change the tie in the thinkings. And well, it was like say, marijuana. It was like marijuana. It, it just wasn't it wasn't accepted back then. It wasn't accepted, dude. It wasn't accepted. You, we took drug tests after drug tests after drug tests. I never flunked a drug test in my life. Twelve years I'm in the National Football League, and all of a sudden I'm playing for the Oakland Raiders. And Al Davis is my my you know my owner at that time of my rights, and so I knew the relationship. And then all of a sudden, here I am getting stuck with this crazy like take a test behind Burger King or something like that nature. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'll go to any facility and do it. Why would you even right. do me like that or treat me like that? So maybe is that some of the privilege that you're talking about? You know, when it comes to if you're black or if you're white on how things are treated in professional sports. Um, I don't know. I can't put my thumb on it, and I won't waste any time or energy. I do know this, though. I do know the, the blatant eye, eye candy when I cut an NFL game when I don't see minorities in the stands. Let me pivot real quick and ask you about Michigan State. You know, you had some great numbers at Michigan State and some great players some great wide receivers, and some great running backs. But the emphasis was on the running game. Talk a little bit about your experience at Michigan State and the football program. I just chose the wrong school. I went to a school that ran the ball 50 times. Mm. Yeah. Let's, be, let's be frank. I'll never make the we'll – never, we'll never make the College Hall of Fame, but yet I was a first-round pick at wide right. receiver. Mark Ingram, senior, will never make the College Hall of Fame, even though he was a first-round pick receiver out of Michigan mm-hmm. State. We ran, we ran the ball, yeah. and um, and we ran the ball 40, 50 times a game. And Lorenzo White is one of my best friends and will mm. always be one of my best friends, and that was our tailback. And yep. uh, that's the only reason why you didn't see any any friction, you know. Mm. Um, Interesting. I, yeah, and that's the only reason you didn't see friction. Plus, we didn't have the portal. You got Andre Rising <laughs> on one side. You got Mark Ingram Sr. on the other side. And you got a tight end who played in four Super Bowls with the Buffalo Bills right. at tight end in Butch Row. Yep. And man, come on. What what kind of I still to this day don't know how we were we were all time leader receiver at Michigan State for <laughs> 20 years. 20 years, dude. And I never had, I'm telling you, I've never had <laughs> but that's just a sign of the times, man. That was the way things were run back then. I mean, unfortunately, exactly. yeah. I mean, and, 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 and it you sucked, know, but and, yeah. Facts. All right, a couple rapid fire: Kobe or MJ? No, don't put me in that one, dog. You know, MJ, one of my best friends, man, and <laughs> you know that, man. You know, MJ, one of my best friends, and, and I don't love no basketball player more than I love Kobe. <laughs> Wait, so, uh, so I'm not, I'm, I won't ask you the Glenn Rice, Derek Coleman question. Okay, Steph Curry or Scottie Pippen? Scottie Pippen, a good friend of mine, too bad. That's all right. He's been critical of MJ recently, so you, you can choose one or the other. It's just it's just a question. Ah, uh, man, <laughs> I love Kobe more than any basketball player ever. Michael Jordan is one of my one of my long distance best friends. You know. Um, I, I learned a lot from Mike that I used in football as a, as a pro football player. I learned a lot from Michael, just watching Michael Jordan. Um, and, you know, we are good friends. And so, yeah. Uh, but I love Kobe more than any basketball player, man. How did his loss affect you? I'm still hurt. I'm, 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 I'm man, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm, I'm still hurt. You know, um, uh, that one, that one, that one hurt me, man. It hurt. And anyway, everybody that know Andre, everybody that know Dre, yeah. Rising like no Dre, man. Kobe, like I got every Kobe, man. I don't even want to go into it from clothes to shoes to just you know, that's my guy, man. And um, his family, GG, all of them, man. I love them. Um, man, that I, 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 I ain't gonna get over that one. Um, but if I had to pick between the what was the other ones, uh, Pippen or Curry, because oh, oh, <laughs> oh, you, know, well. you know, if Curry got the you know, if Curry got the ball. And Pippen got to go check him. Man, Curry might not get a shot off. 
You know what I'm saying? He's Come like, on. Are you serious right now? Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. You, you think Curry can score a bucket on? Yeah, on hell people? yeah. Come on. Those guys can score on anybody. I was able right. to go by. Hold on a second. I went by Carlos Briggs in the Pro-Am at Eastern Michigan with a KJ and dropped a no-look dime to Mark Hughes in the short corner for a yoke. If I can go by Carlos Briggs All-American, I guarantee you Steph Curry's going by Scotty Pippen or anybody else. Hell yeah, okay. my answer okay. is hell yes. And, and, and shouts out, and shouts out to uh, Mark Hughes. That's my baby too, man. Um, <laughs> shouts out to Mark. Very proud of Mark. Um, and then yeah, and this doing the, great things. Yeah. And, and then that's the thing too. Um, how the hell... How the hell Curry go? How the hell Curry go check <laughs> Okay, well you got a point there. I'm not debating that. I'm just talking about who you taking? <laughs> who you taking? <laughs> Sponsored by PSK. You can find them online at lids.com, pskcollective.com, tjmax.com, walmart.com, and now Kohl's department store at kohls.com. And now back to this incredible interview right here in the sport. Give me Curry, man. Give me Curry, yes, man. Give me Curry. Let's give me, go. Give me, Curry. give me Chef Curry, man. Chef Curry. <laughs> give me Chef Curry, man. Chef Curry. You know oh, what I'm man. saying? Give me Chef Curry. Did you ever give wish you played for did you ever wish you played for the Lions? Were you a Lions fan growing up? Man, I tell you what, I've always wanted to be in the Lions front office. What the f is going on? I, always I heard a true story from uh from Karin, uh, you know, the writer football writer he said that one of the lions owners the late owner one of the daughters went into the locker room after kaepernick took a knee and said what is it going to take for you to stop kneeling like that's the kind of shit that, that the lions have to deal with and why nobody wants to come anymore after barry and megatron say that again the the former owner that was the day-to-day -day operation this is according to karen phillips he said that the, that she went into the locker room after Colin kneeled and said, what's it going to take for you guys to stop kneeling? And that's straight from him in a podcast. And so that's the kind of stuff that you're dealing with and why people don't, that stuff gets around. People talk about that shit and nobody wants to go there. And then you got a guy who has no business being a head coach right now. And you got a special assistant to the, to the organization and, and Chris, and I mean, it's just, it's just, come on, man. You've seen this as long as I have, it's just a freaking triple a organization it is a disaster it's an unmet it's the worst run organization what would you do if you were the general manager to turn things around because it's a joke it's so frustrating being a fucking lions fan first i don't know what they did up to this point but collectively i would get with the owner the president and you saying is that i was the gm can i be the gm and president so i don't have to please you know, if I'm the GM and president. And bring Dion in with you, will you? Because he's about to get a big time job. Man, you know what I'm about to do? I'm trying to get, I'm get to it. Like, if I'm the GM and president. Um, I said in the barbershop on Clubhouse that I want Dion as the Lions head coach. F*** the dumb shit, what's going on now. People push back and say, well, he's, if he leaves the HBC now, f*** that. If he goes to NFL, no one's going to say shit. And I, I don't, okay, I'll take a chance. I want Dion as my head coach. I'll tell you what. Uh, well, you well, why are you starting that campaign? You need you need Andre Rising as your GM and president. That's what I just said. Right. Let's oh, go. Sponsored by City Lokes, C I T Y L O C S. You can find them online at citylokes.com, where you can go and make your own personalized license plate hats. They're so cool. You got to check them out. And don't forget to enter the code the Sports Deli at checkout for your special ten percent discount. And now back to this incredible interview right here in the sports deli. And then the thing is, um, I honestly, and, 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 and what's what this, this what bothers me. When you become an icon in something, society don't want you to become an icon in something else. If they don't know you, if they know you, it's like, okay, Dion, you were great. Andre, you were great. This players, you go, okay. White owners is what you're saying. Don't don't try to be a GM or president or don't try to be a, a, head, <laughs> right. a head coach. Right. Like if you played and you were you were all right, okay, you can become a head coach. But if you played and you were like one of the greatest, or if not the greatest, it is so hard to do the next gig because 
ridiculous. They can't get they can't get that. It's almost like an actor or actress that was a child star or on a great show, and that's all you see him as, like Urkel, or right <laughs> stuff like that, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Honestly, as the GM and president of Lions, I would call a meeting with the owners and ownership, and uh, before I met with the players, I would meet with the owners and ask them, what's my limitations as a GM and a president to building a certain culture, but not just a certain culture, a winning culture. Well, I hope it happens because it's just fucking ridiculous after after all these years. Okay, so you- Back to uh, Detroit <laughs> Lions. <laughs> yeah, finish up on that point. Um. Like I said, I would take that meeting to ask what my, as the GM and president, what are my limitations to building not just a culture here in Detroit, Mm -hmm. but a winning culture, you know, because all these sayings are so cliche. It's hard to, and the door has been revolving. It's hard to come in and say something that the other one, that the predecessor, that the the, the prior guy didn't say, you know, already, you know, and you come in as a predecessor and you, you can easily stick your foot in your mouth. So I would take that meeting to see what my limitations were. That way I knew how far I could go. If they said, we have no limitations, Coach Risen, uh, Andre, um, go at it as best as you know how to go at it. You're a world champion. You play for some great organizations. Uh, you've been a captain in the locker room. But what kind of, what does that mean? Does that mean they just want to make money and just barely get by and be eight and eight and just barely get to the playoffs? I mean, who, who, who would ever say that? But, but that could be cool too if they wanted that and that ain't what we want as a fan base. That's not what we want as an um, internal organization. That means downstairs, the locker room, the coaches, the players. Um, and so that's that's what I would want to erase. That I get it. Right, that riff right there, that belief that, the ownership don't want us to win. So if the owner, if, if, if that's floating around, you're not going to win. So until we clarify and clear that up, and that's why I'm taking the meeting as the GM, as the president, not as the head coach, as the GM president, I want to sit down with ownership and be like, look, what's my limitations? Because if you tell me my limitations, I'll know right then in that split second if you want to win or not. And so say they grant me the Christmas wish list. All right. Well, bingo. Don't nobody want to come to Detroit? We can't get a free agent to come to Detroit? Well, how the hell do you think the HBCU huh, changed the, the demographics of recruiting with right. one move? Right. One of my best friends became the head coach at Jackson State University. Facts. With one move. Yep. Florida State Seminoles had him on campus. Yep. A couple other people thought about having him on campus. One move, and it was yep. a domino effect. Yep. Let's take a chance with Eddie George. Yep. Let's take a chance with the next guys. Yep. You know, once we meet these guys, let's stop reading the newspaper about these guys, magazines about these guys. Let's bring these guys in, and let's see if they do fit the bill. And are they going to be a little different? Yeah. Are they going to be a little cutting edge? Yes. That's what made them them. That's what made Andre Rise and Andre Rise. That's what made Deion Sanders Deion Sanders. But they're coaches, they're administrators, they're, they're people that can help institutions, they're people that can help organizations. It's representation also, and Hugh Jackson's the offensive coordinator at Tennessee State also, it should be noted, and he's not making a dime there, he's doing it because he loves Eddie, and Jackson State's 8-1, and one. so let's let's just tell it like I it is. I talk to Dion every day, I talk to Dion every day, every other day. How's he doing, is he feeling better? You know, he went in, when he went in, uh, we sent our prayers. You know, we always talk. We talk through social media here and there. Um, his office coordinator, receiver coach, Jason Phillips, one of my one of my other favorite guys who I talk to all the time. And, yeah. um, you know, uh, it's a shame that he hadn't got his, his shot as a big-time office coordinator on another level. Now he's they just made their positions big time. And that's right. what I love. He made his position big time. Dion made his position big time. And so and look at Todd Bowles. He was one of your coaches a long time ago. And now look what he did in Tampa Bay. I mean, you know, come on. There's so many examples of so, people of know, color that should be in head coaching positions. Two fucking head coaches right now in the NFL. <laughs> come I think on. We start, I think we start two in front office. 
right. start administration. Um, God, damn, the eagle, man. The eagle, the eagle eye. And like I said, if they granted me that, that would it would be a no brainer. I would give him his opportunity, be the first one to give him his opportunity, but I'm also on my first opportunity. But I'm also gonna make sure that we bring in the right players, but there's a lot of right pieces They're already there. There's a lot of right pieces there. We can run the ball. We've had first round picks at Lyman through the years. We've had high first round picks for a long time. And nobody can say that we don't or haven't brought great players in. We had a Barry Sanders. We had a Calvin Johnson. We had a Matthew Stafford. We had a, we had a, 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 a great offensive lineman. Unfortunately, he got, he got sick. We had different situations, but we haven't been able to put it all together, whether it was front office management, whether it was players on the field, off the field. But one thing I will accredit the Detroit Lions players, they don't go to pointing fingers. Through the years, out of all this low tier playing in the wins and loss columns, you don't see them pointing and poking fingers. And I tell you another thing you don't see. You don't see fair weather Detroit Lion fans. No, you don't. Either they're Lion fans, and I got goosebumps, and I didn't even grow up as a Lions fan. They don't turn their backs. They they are diehard Lions fans. You they wear they wear it proud. It's a great mascot, it's a great logo. It's one of the greatest logos they ever made. It has awesome colors, you know. You look like Eric Hippel. <laughs> you look like Eric Hippel, you know? And you got to start from the top, man. You got to erase that that aura, that mystique, that ownership don't want success. And I can't, it's, it's hard for me to believe um, that they don't want success in today's time, too. And they do want success. They want white success and they don't equate brilliance with people of color. And that's why you don't see more people in leadership positions of color because they're associated as, as having different narratives instead of narratives of brilliance and builders and architects in the same way that other white people, recycled white people continue to get opportunities, which is so incredibly frustrating and, and uh, just ridiculous at this point in time and where we are in society. Now, I will tell you this. You cut that television on and you watch coaching staffs across the country, even on a collegiate level. And you don't see too many minorities. Same thing. You don't Same on a, thing. the collegiate level as well. You don't, you don't, you don't see you don't see too many minorities um, in those positions. And well, that's why I'm on that uh, think tank with Hugh Jackson to try and change the narrative with uh, yeah. enough to try and get the Rooney rule fixed once and for yeah, all. We don't even respect the Rooney rule. So stupid. Yeah, we don't respect the Rooney rule because it's like, um, it's it, it became a joke, you know, because a joke. you put the Rooney, in, Rooney rule in, but guess what came? Social media. So guess what leaks even faster now? The opposing right. team that needs the coach. The opposing team that needs the new coach. And why are there any interviews before the Super Bowl's over? There should be... We know two weeks, three, we know a month out who they're going to get exactly. because everybody's already talking about that particular coach who's playing where? In the playoffs or the exactly. Super Bowl? The playoffs or the Super Bowl? He's going to get plucked. Well, what about my man? <laughs> and that's just the nature and the beast of the game. And if you don't have your hat in the bucket, you can never get pulled out. You know, and so uh, I've been coaching so long. Um, I know I can coach. I know I'm a good coach. I know I'm a solid coach. I know I'm fair. Um, but I think I might do better in the front office. Well, let's get you. Let's get you and Hugh and Dion in Detroit. It's so funny. Do you remember what Dion said when he was potentially going to be drafted by the Lions? Oh, they had to put him on layaway, man. Yeah. <laughs> I would have asked for so much money. They didn't put me a layaway. <laughs> I just told my wife how the combine really is. You know what I'm saying? The combine, oh, the combine is rough. But we were able to go in and um, be, be free spirits, be confident. Um, and nobody can't tell me, man. They can't tell me. The let, time, me ask you, let me ask you a couple of me. Yeah, yeah, man. Nothing like it. 
We changed yeah. the league, man. Changed the league. We didn't do anything different that they hadn't done in the past, maybe wear a mink coat or wear right. a diamond ring, but I know we changed the game on that field. We changed the game. Absolutely. And you guys got into it a few times, you know, but you still remain great friends. And that's that's what it's all about. The brotherhood. You got the O&R label. So I can't say what that is. You're, you're more than welcome to. But I, I'm not going to. Yeah. Uh, but it's for people 35 and older. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, so let me ask you a couple music questions. KRS-One or Big Daddy Kane? It depends on what kind of clothes you got on. Facts. <laughs> Filas or LSAs. <laughs> all right, if you got if you got some tennis shoes on, you already know KRS one. That's know, right. This that's KRS. If you got some hard shoes on and a mink, you know that's some right. diamonds, go go like some shades. You know what I'm saying, player? You know what I'm saying, player? Yeah, you, you oh, already shit. know you got to go the other way. You got to go the other That's way. hilarious. Nas or Drake? Different type of MCs. Yeah, for sure. Different type of MCs. Um, Drake went to subjects that Nas hadn't touched on yet because he had built such a great library into that that flame that he was spitting. You yeah. know, on that education and knowledge and um, spirit and all that good stuff Nas brought to the table. Um they were two different type of MCs, very, very, very unique. Um, um, and they had that sound that'll last forever, too. Mm, oh, my God. Both, both of them. They had that sound that'll last forever. Drake, yeah. Drake being a producer as well, right. doing beats, I think that has something to play in, too, with him being able to do R&B, hip-hop, crossovers, pop, totally. all that stuff. Whereas Nas was your strictly number one MC of all time type. Yeah go at it type, you know, Drake might be number one artist, like, of all time, like, Drake, Chris Brown, Michael Jackson, yeah, Drake yeah, up there, week, the weekend, um, them guys are up there, man, Rakim, Eminem, <laughs> Jay-Z, <laughs> or Kanye, what, hold on, man, you just threw you, boom, 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 you like, boom, 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 all I heard was Eminem, dog, <laughs> Eminem, dog. That's it. <laughs> White boy, let's go. Eminem, dog. You know what I'm saying? No, I can't go against the pressure. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, shit. Because you know, with him, you get a lot. You get 50. You get Dre. That's you get true. a lot, dog. You get a lot. You know, you get pop with me. You know, you get a lot. You get a lot, now. Nah. But who else yeah. you stand in there, too, though? Jay-Z or Kanye? Oh, man. Jay-Z, my boy. Jay-Z, <laughs> Jay one of my partners, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> My partners, man. Jay-Z, one of my partners, man. Right, there? Kanye. When you get Kanye, when you get Jay-Z, I ain't worried about they beefs and all that stuff. That all yeah. that, they making too much money for all that. Yeah, but really. You get Kanye when you get Jay-Z. Okay, say something else. Who, who was the other one? You had Rakim, Eminem, Jay-Z, or Kanye. Oh, man, how you throw Rakim, man? <laughs> Rakim, long in there, man. <laughs> I know, that's why I had him in Yo, there. <laughs> that's, that's Yoda of the game, man. It should have been, so, been Rakim or Big Daddy Kane. That's what it should have been. Now, if you'd have said something like that, I would have had to hit you with Roxanne, Roxanne. <laughs> and, and. <laughs> Wait, so Sanford and Son are all in the family? Oh man, come on, man! Stop playing before we kick you out the gym and take <laughs> you know, all your basketball. I'm gonna hit you with a Steve Smith in a minute. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? Come on, man! Don't nobody mess with Fred. Come on. All right, Jeffersons are good times. <laughs> Why are you trying to start a riot? You trying to start a riot in here? <laughs> Jeffersons are good times. Yeah, oh, come on, man. man! You know we had to go with good times. JJ, no, you know Jeffersons was Jeffers was dynamite. George was dynamite. Don't get me wrong, man. But, they was different. They, they was living the good life. <laughs> All right, good four more. Living more like they, us. They were. They, they were. Four more questions. Okay, NWA or Ice Cube? Whew. That's another great friend of mine, man. Mm. I used to have Ice Cube as a special guest on the sideline. Wow. Playing with the Falcons. Yeah, we're good. Good friends to this day. And I yeah, let me sit in on sessions. You loved Atlanta, huh? Now this was all out in California. Oh, really? Okay. Oh no, but yeah, he was on the bench and. Atlanta. In Atlanta, yeah, yeah. In the studio sessions with him out in LA. You know, awesome. Uh, different different times, different, different, different times. I've been in studios with Dr. Dre. I've been in awesome. with um Snoop, different times with of course everybody knows being pop, you know, been in the studio a lot, but yeah, yeah. 
uh, Too Short and DOC and um, Okay, now back to the two artists. <laughs> NWA or Ice Cube. <laughs> man, man, man. NWA. He part of NWA. You get Ice Cube with NWA. Come on now. Yeah, that's Come true. Friday or Menace to Society? Oh. It depends on what side of the bed you wake up on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know what I'm saying? You like one of my daughter's pictures. It depends on what side of the bed you wake up on that day. You can wow. either have that look. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, shit. Or you can have. Or you can have that look. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm trying to still decide on whether I should put it where I should put it. That's the new crib, right? Wow. Yeah. Right there on that wall, right there. That fireplace, huh? Yeah. Heck yeah. I don't if think you don't... the wife is going to allow it. I might have to wait till <laughs> I finish the basement. <laughs> there you go. The man cave. You already know it. She okay, so. so la... herself somewhere. Wow. You know what I'm saying? She's somewhere around here. Yeah, so she, you... half Mexican, she half Mexican, half Irish. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, no, so. No, I, no I'm, not, I'm, I'm Irish. I'm black Irish. She's a. Uh... Real? She's Mexican German. I'm black Irish. She's Mexican German, Mexican German, and I'm wow. black Irish. Yeah, with four girls. Oh, you and I are both girl dads. It's uh, it's been an amazing experience. Uh, uh, so, man, it's amazing. Uh, so, next thing on your bucket list? Uh, have a successful book. Book. Yep. Have a successful book. Have a successful documentary. Have a successful movie. Um, you want to talk about it real quick? And a yellow coat somewhere, a, 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 a yellow coat somewhere up in there. Let's go Hall of Fame. And yeah. uh, just a healthy life, man. That's on the bucket list. Keep living this healthy life. Wifey's two and a half years removed from cancer. Amazing. Cancer. So, Congrats. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, uh, just oh. continue doing what we're doing now, man. Um, life is great. Life is awesome. We're going to keep one foot in front of the other. Uh, we're going to introduce our music. Our film goes into production uh, in two weeks awesome. um, with Wide Open Films. Uh, started a publishing company called Lights On Publishing, uh, mm. which is the book is under. Uh, the film will be up under as well. Um, and we're also looking to do more feature uh, feature films and uh, also publishing more books of uh, of athletes uh, that have come through our, our time and our pastime um, also. And so we got some uh, great names in the bucket right now. Uh, I can't reveal them. I can't reveal them yeah. right now, but um, some big time projects. And uh, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, former players are coming together and uh, networking. And uh, that was big because it's so hard to network with guys you don't know. And you plan against them, um, it's, it's, let alone it's, you don't have any business time during the day, during the season, because, you know, they want you to go to practice and go home. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and who are you going to meet in the business world? You know, so you end up leaving everything to your agent or representation, and all of a sudden you don't know nothing, and you're sitting at the right. table. Everybody's talking for you. Um, so I've been fortunate, yeah. fortunate, been lucky uh, to bump into some former players who have uh, the bosses of their uh, of their own own movements. That's and, awesome. And the NFL has been great uh, during this process, and um, uh, just 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 giddy about it, man. The girls are doing good in school. Uh, I got good good rapport with most of my sons. You know, you got a couple of them every now and then go against the grain. Yeah. Um, but um, tough love, tough love has to come out every now and then. But uh, all in all, man, I couldn't ask for more uh, in the process of bringing the casino to, to Michigan. You know. Uh, wow, awesome. Yeah, got my feet in that one. And uh, so th those are things on the bucket list, you know, and uh, hopefully land a, land a spot somewhere in the front office of one of these NFL teams or if not, uh, a head coaching spot at one of these colleges. So, uh, Mel Tucker's doing a great job at state. So, if you could have yeah. five people at your dinner table of all time, sports or non sports, who would be at your dinner table? Last question. Oh, Muhammad Ali. Mm. Uh, Malcolm X. Um, wow. Bill, Bill Gates. Mm. And the president of Dubai. Well, why? Why the president of Dubai? That that one wasn't a new one for me. Why the president of Dubai? Yeah. He probably got more money than 
more wealth than everybody sitting at the table. And I brought and I brought wealth to the table, but he's probably sitting on more wealth than Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. And so the things that could transpire from that um, with, with religion sitting at the table with Malcolm mm. and Muhammad, um, and both of them seeing two different visions at one, one point in time, but yet being identical. Um, Muhammad Ali was Cassius Clay before he became Muhammad, you know, and um, Malcolm X realized they were also white Muslims. Um, Muslims of different color and denominate, you know, denominations, and it erased a lot of hatred. For um, sure. Yeah, it's in, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I, I listened to Jeff Pope, former NFL player uh, in Clubhouse. He talks about Malcolm X all the time in there. So I've learned a lot from listening to him. And the one thing I'll say is when Jelani McCoy came on this show, we've had Jay Billis, we've had a lot of guys on this show, Andre Risen, future Hall of Famer. And uh, so the one thing that that I've tried to do is listen twice as much as I've spoken so that I can educate white people in particular. And what, but what Jelani said to your point is, you know, former NBA champion, is that white people have been shutting the black and brown community out for a long time, especially in the entertainment industry. Uh, now we have cannabis in uh, technology. Um, and so because they were afraid of losing that money. And so things are changing. The, the power of the black dollar is real. Uh, there's more generational wealth. And so you're, you're a part of that. And so I applaud you for uh, coming back and reinventing yourself from where you were. And people can, like you said, go online and, and find out information about what happened to you, you know, back in, in 2012 when Broke was reported and, and on 30 for 30 and stuff like that. I think it's a fascinating testimonial. Um, you know, what you've done to reinvent yourself and what you're doing for the black and brown community and, 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 uh, the power of the black dollar, just all of it, man. It's just, uh, and just the, the, the my earliest thought of you to, to think that I would ever have you on my podcast when I was in that gym in Flint Northwestern. I mean, just, I can't man. And so much for that 20 minutes of with, with me today, man, I can't thank you enough. Any, and like I said, I don't just have people on the show. I, I don't advertise, I don't, I'm just trying to let things grow organically to educate people. And I hope people got something out of this because, um, yeah, I just love your vibration. And, and, uh, I think magical things are down the road, man. I think the best is yet to come. Man, I appreciate it, man. And thanks for having me on the show. You know, uh, you keep, you keep it real, you know, and the, and the thing is <clears throat> we got a long way to go, yeah. but at least, at least we're walking, um, and jogging and, um, in unison. More than yeah. ever. More than ever. Um, and yeah. also Latino. Um, yeah. we're, we're, we're going in unison more than anything. And I think uh, that ruffles even deeper feathers. Good. When it comes to the black dollar, uh, yeah. it's already it's always been prevalent. Uh, it's just being noticed now. Yeah. I think there's more uh, education to what a dollar is and what a value of a dollar is and a coin is. Uh, in today's time, because of social media and because of the new platforms that we have where you can go find information um, that school doesn't offer or right. uh, the community doesn't offer, you can go find that information out now. Or they don't offer when you're a professional athlete either. <laughs> Damn sure I didn't do it back then. And nope. um, technology's changed. It will, conti it will continue to grow. Uh, and collaboration is changing in the black and brown community. I mean, it's completely different collabos. than it used to be. The collabos, the collabos have yeah. changed um, through different genres. Uh, you, you're, you're seeing so much diversity totally. uh, through different portals. You're seeing different diversity, different portals. They can't stop it. Um, right. Black America can't stop it. White America can't stop it. it it's God's plan. Like Drake said, it's yep. going to do what it does. It's going to move and evolve how it's going to do. Nobody in my lifetime and nobody in the last whatever centuries can tell me they shook the hand of a caveman or a BC man or was here when them craters fell or whatever the hell fell uh, and killed all the uh, dinosaurs or and, or they didn't exist because shit, last time I checked, elephants exist, giraffes exist, lions exist, gorillas, apes, 
polar bears, all that stuff is real. So to disrespect another human being because of their color or because of their race, I think it's the most ignorant uh, human being act um, outside of taking someone's life uh, senseless over a senseless uh, act. I think is that I think racism is right there next to right there next to it because I believe you do kill a person off when you exhibit racism. Fascinating stuff, man. Much love and and the utmost respect for you and your family and your endeavors and everything that you're doing. And uh, you're welcome back here anytime if uh, you want to come back here with someone that you, you know you think would be a powerful guest to send the message that you just talked about with uh, trying to end racism. Uh, helping helping the black and brown community not just create generational wealth but uh representation matters man it just does you can go to you can go to uh andre rising wide open andre rising wide open.com you can go get the book you can go yep. read some fascinating things you can pre-order the book i'm actually headed to the packers this week great organization i'm hosting the uh, alu- uh the alumni i'm ho- i'm hosting uh, the tour of lambeau field what an awesome Gig, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, no other venue like that, right? Come on, dude. You Man. don't dream dream of that having a career like I had and going through all the obstacles, ups and downs, failures, success. And then, you know, at this age of my career, I've been retired over 20 some years and to be able to host, you know, the tour at Lambeau Field, where some of the greatest players are playing right now. Amazing. Also that, you know, the tradition. So you can go to Andre Rising wide open.com. I wish everybody well. Wish everybody a great Thanksgiving. Also a great Christmas. All that good stuff. All right, man. Go do your thing. Good luck finishing the house. Ah, and, you already uh, know it, man. Hey, <laughs> get those hands dirty, baby. Let's go. All right. Much love, man. We'll talk soon. I appreciate you. That's out. We ought to do a collab, collab uh, podcast here sooner or later. Hey, let's do it. Yeah, let me know. I'll, I'll stay in touch. All right. Appreciate it, All man. All right. Much respect, man. Flintstone right there. Andre Rise and everybody. Incredible time with him uh, right here in the sports deli and for dr j and coach k i'm hootie hoot remember black lives matter stop the bullying stop the asian hate and remember it takes a village man that was (laughs) i know i've said it twice already 20 minutes man that was um an incredible time to share space with him and uh i hope uh, again you enjoyed it and feel free to send us an email to thesportsdeli at gmail.com and DM me at uh, Mike Hootner on Instagram or on TikTok. And uh, really, truly uh, hope you enjoyed sharing space with Andre Risen and me, Hootie Hoot. Remember, it takes a village. Much love. Peace.